There are not two selves. The ghost of the second self is Koran's own, an ancient name for consciousness. All the while the body survives, this is the self. In sleep and in some meditative trance states, this inverts and becomes the dreams of the subconscious, while the consciousness is unconscious. When the self is not the consciousness of the body, it is believed to be consciousness still. This consciousness, it is thought, either finds refuge in an incarnation or enters the heavens of the multiverse. Just as when it is cloaked in the flesh, it knows itself by the flesh, so when it is brought before the Lord God, must it shed its highest definition of self to be one with the Creator, and that is only the consciousness. There are not two selves, because you do not stand beside your own consciousness. There is not one self, because there is you besides consciousness. There is no self, because there is no consciousness. Koran Zone was first in the age of the ancient Egyptians, associated with the Jinn of the Heavens and the Deacons of the Zodiac. He came to represent the disincarnate, discorporeal, underworld summoned by magicians, and the concept he represented came to be suppressed along with the other arcane arts of metaphysics by the subsequent solar central masculine cults that have become modern religions. The deified ideal that replaced him in mainstream terminology was the Holy Ghost. When people lift their spirits up with the Holy Ghost, they are expanding their consciousnesses. Just as the Holy Ghost is only part of the deified trinity of God the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the maternal Holy Ghost, so was Koran's own called the disincarnate spirit of the original head of the Egyptian occult who first held the title yad he vad -He. It is thought to have been Koran's own that Siddhartha conquered in the form of his inner demons, clearing his consciousness to teach the way to the light. The Holy Ghost represents the idea of the conscious universe, derived from the Hindu belief that we are all the dream in the mind of God. In this capacity, then, the angel scroll of Yeshua ben Padia may be thought of as a list of mentations in the mind of God. This has been part of the cyclical process of procession, all of mankind's contribution. As much as the ritual of sacrifice that makes a martyr out of the scapegoat. The occult orders have always spoken for the processional cycle. It has only been since the time of Christ that the prodigal son cults have had younger and more public representatives, thus ending the age of the father and initiating the age of the crowned and conquering child. This age is marked by the fool or jester archetype of Koran's own, representing Orion in the Tarot deck, because it has been marked by rapid cultural change and technological progress. It has long been theorized that to understand the Most High, you must think of the inversion of the Most Low, and, as I have described in Kabbalah, the former greatest common factor inverts to become the new least common denominator. Thus, whatever God was or has been, Satan becomes. This works similarly to the river of Thales, representing the flow of consciousness or of time. That which God was, 
Satan is. God is within the moment, and what is past for him is Satan. God also is seen as the light of humanity's future. Thus, what is the future for man is the present of God and the past for Satan. In this way, the lowest is that which is shed by the Most High, that is, its sense of self.